Statistics and Excel. Coin flip statistics example. Got data? Let's get stuck into it with statistics and Excel. Or OneNote in this case, but we'll talk about Excel too. You're not required to, but if you have access to OneNote, we're in the icon left hand side, OneNote presentation 1315 coin flip statistics example in Excel tab. We're also uploading transcripts to OneNote so you could use the immersive reader tool, possibly change the language if you so choose, and then either read the transcript or listen to the transcript in multiple different languages, tying it out to the video presentations using the timestamps. OneNote desktop version here, data on the left hand side, remembering the two major categories of statistical problems. One being where we have all the data, all the information for the entire population and are applying our statistical tools to organize that information so we can get meaning from it. And two, a situation where we don't have all the data, all the information for the entire population and are often reliant on samples of that data. And then we apply similar statistical tools, not so much so that we can fully understand the, exam the sample itself, but so that we can infer the results of that sample to the entire population. Now here we're thinking more of the second of those buckets where we don't know the entire population. However, oftentimes it's useful to think about situations where we do know the entire population and we can get basically the answers. And then we can also take an, a sample from that population and use our sampling techniques to see if when we infer the results of the sample to the entire population, they are applicable. And so in a prior presentation, we did that with heights. We had an entire population of heights. We took samples of those heights to see how representative these samples were to the entire population. Now we'll do a similar kind of thing with coin flips, which is a little bit easier sometimes because you have like the 50-50, the two results on the coin flips as opposed to the heights data where you have the range of the heights, but also it's a little bit more mathematical and theoretical because when we think about coin flips, the entire population you can think of as a conceptual type of thing, which would be an infinite amount of flips. So in other words, when we're thinking about coin flips, if we had a coin and we kind of assume that if it was a fair coin, that would be our general assumption, the fair coin would mean that anytime I flip it, you're gonna get a, an even chance of it coming up heads or tails. So that's gonna be like the null hypothesis and then how would we test whether or not that is indeed the case? Well, we would have to flip it a bunch of times and then test whether or not what we think would be happening is indeed what is happening. And if we come up with evidence that that is not the case, something else is happening, then the question is what kind of statistical evidence would we need to override the general null assumption that it would be 50-50? Now, when we think about this from a statistical sampling concept, you would think about, well, What's the entire population here that we're thinking about? Well, it's a conceptual idea that if you flipped the coin an infinite amount of times, then you would come out to 50-50. But obviously in the real world, you will never be able to flip the coin an infinite amount of times. So any amount of times that you flip the coin, in theory, you can think of as a similar kind of concept as when we took a sample of the entire population of heights. So any amount of flips is gonna be some finite example of the amount of flips of the conceptual concept of flipping it an infinite amount of times. And if it was a completely fair coin, we know the outcome of an infinite number of times just conceptually would be 50-50 if it was a fair coin. So that's kind of the idea. So then two things like, like always we would like to do here, we would like to say, uh, we want to know this conceptually for statistical uh, and we also want to think about how we, can we test this out in Excel. So we'll give an idea of, of how we can use Excel tools to kind of uh, test this out. Now obviously uh, if you were to uh, generate this in Excel you can use something like the random generator again. Last time we used a random generator to just give us a random decimal number of multiple decimals out. This time, however, we're gonna use the random between. So if I wanna simulate a coin flip, 
I can basically say, look, what I want to do is I'm just going to assign a one to heads, two to tails. And now that I have a numerical assignment to my outcomes, I can use a random generator, random between the bottom being one, the top being two. And then Excel will give us this random generation, which basically simulates anything that's random between two numbers, right? So now we've got our random generator that we can play with and simulate something of, of this uh, nature. So now as I look at my random generation, I can use this formula and I can copy it down to as many cells that I want. Now, however many cells I copy it down to, if I copy it down to 100 cells, that would be like simulating 100 flips of the coin. And 100 flips of the coin is kind of like from a sampling idea or concept, 100 flips out of an infinite amount of flips, a sample of 100 out of a sample out of the actual population, which is a conceptual idea of infinity, right? So then, so then uh, if, we, if we take a look at our, I, I can then basically organize my data. So once I have my random coin flips, I can then, I can then say this random generator is gonna keep on generating random results. So I'm gonna copy this random generated field and paste it static. So now it's pasted without the actual formula, but just as hard coded ones and twos. I can also use Excel if I want to then give me the results in terms of words. I can use a formula in Excel to say, if there's a one, tell me it's a heads, right? So we'll do that in Excel if you wanna, if you want to uh, see those formulas uh, to do that. But, but conceptually, I can just say, well, one is a head and two is a tails. I sorted it by heads and then tails here. So we can sort them heads on top, tails on the bottom. I can get an idea from doing that. Just saying, eh, it looks kind of close to 50-50 maybe, right? But I can't really tell 